guys welcome to another video so we get a lot of questions about candida mm. and this is something that has been on topic for a while and i guess we just want to share with you the science behind it the evidence behind it and mm. if it exists and what do we do about it basically yeah exactly so what most people don't understand is that having candida in your gut is normal and it's supposed to be there. And what we want to just share with you today is the fact that a lot of the common misconceptions around candida, people think this stuff is dangerous. It's dangerous if it gets into your bloodstream, but in your gut and in your mouth, it's meant to be there. So, you know, realistically, if people are telling you that you've got a candida issue in your gut, then there's something else going on. And we're going to share some of the science around that with you today. So let's dig into the first bit of information around uh, candida. Let's get going. Candida is a normal constituent of our gut flora. Uh, get some candida in your bloodstream, though, and it can cause a life-threatening infection. But it's normal to have some candida hanging around in your mouth or colon. It's location, location, location. Uh, just like having stool bacteria in our colon is normal, but stool bacteria in our blood or a wound would be bad. Because of the ability of candida to cause problems in the wrong location or in people who are immunocompromised, a candida syndrome theory arose linking the presence of candida to all sorts of health problems, which led to mycophobia, fungal phobia, th this false interpretation that the finding of candida in your mouth or stool is evidence of some kind of infection rather than just being totally normal. And if you think the authors are being a little overdramatic with their phobia talk, just Google candida and you'll see. So not, not only is it normal to have candida, it's actually hard to get rid of it. Not only is it normal to have candida in your gut, you apparently couldn't get rid of it even if you wanted to. Give people powerful antifungal drugs and you can drop levels down, but they pop right back up again as soon as you stop them. So not only is candida a normal part of your gut microbiome, it's also very hard to get rid of, even if you use antifungal medication. But a lot of the questions we get are around the fact that we recommend people eat a lot of fruit. Okay, here, a lot of bananas. People think that because we recommend a diet that includes a decent amount of sugar, that we are promoting candida overgrowth in the gut, okay? But, funnily enough, sugar doesn't even get to the colon, okay? So people out there that are telling us that, you know, we are recommending a diet that promotes candida are incorrect because they haven't got the understanding of the physiology to realize that sugar can't actually get to the colon in the first place. So let's have a look at some of the science around this. And this whole concept of sugar feeds yeast, so go on a low sugar diet, doesn't make much sense since, unless you're lactose intolerant or something, sugars should get absorbed high up in the small intestine and never make it down into the colon. And indeed, there appears to be no correlation between candida counts and sugar consumption. You can put people on a high sugar diet by adding an additional 14 spoonfuls of sugar to people's diet and still not see an effect. So, there is no link between sugar and candida, okay? You see the science there, okay? Obviously, refined sugar is not good for any reason, okay? Mm -hmm. But fruit sugars, you can't go wrong with fruit sugars. They do not cause any issues. Again, find me a study that says fruits are bad for mm. your health. Mm. In fact, recently, some research came out that showed the number one risk factor for death is not eating enough fruit. <laughs> okay? So people aren't getting sick because they're eating too much fruit. People are dying because they're not eating enough fruit. And that's the biggest issue right now. Evidence surrounding all of the myths that people are talking about in regards to candida, it's not actually true. It's not actually proven. And so what we want to show you now is... Uh, some information about whether the candida syndrome is real. Does it even exist? So let's check it out. And also, it's six years 
fruit. High mm. fruit. Six mm. years sugar. But let's check this out anyway. The whole concept of Candida syndrome is officially derided by the American Academy of Allergy and Immunology as speculative and unproven, offering no proof, no proof, no proof, no proof. The presumption that the ubiquitous Candida has some toxic effect on our system is without a trace of scientific proof. Some toxic effect on our system is without a trace of scientific proof. Though some anti-candida therapies can be potentially dangerous. Antifungal drugs might breed resistance and can have side effects. Nystatin's not so bad, but ketoconazole can damage your liver. And indeed, there are reports of people being treated for what may be a fake diagnosis, ending up in quite dire straits because of it. So it's important to know if the syndrome actually exists. So researchers decided to put it to the test. Super simple study. Give some people some stool tubes to take samples. Ask them a bunch of questions about the symptoms they have. Headaches, stomach aches, tiredness, all the typical Candida syndrome symptoms. And they found no relationship to whether or not they had Candida growing in their gut. So no hints of Candida syndrome could be found. So there you have it, folks. No proof, no proof, no proof, no proof. <laughs> is there anything else to say like in terms of candida there's no scientific proof that candida is the cause of any problem whether any it's problem. A, whether it's a fungal infection or unless it enters your bloodstream yeah if it enters your bloodstream different story altogether but if it's in your gut it's not causing the issue okay there's some other issue going on most likely the toxic lifestyle that people have been living, and we need to allow the body to heal. The body heals itself. Okay, don't stop. You know, worrying about all these different things. Just allow the body to heal itself, right? Okay. And and um, here's some Google articles as well. Just typed in Candida on Google, and here you go. Look at all this stuff. Okay, there's plenty of articles suggesting why Candida diets don't work. Why this doesn't work, this doesn't work, etc. So check mm. this out. And we'll we'll link them in the description. We'll link below. them in the description as well. So here you go. All right, so we're just looking at some Google searches for Candida. Let's start with the Mayo Clinic. What is Candida Cleanse Diet and what does it do? All right, let's just scroll down here. It's considered normal to find Candida in the human gut, in the gastrotract, but an overgrowth can create a worse condition, especially if you have ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease. However, there is little evidence that dietary changes can improve the effects of yeast overgrowth if you have these conditions. And unfortunately, there isn't much evidence to support the diagnosis of yeast syndrome. So here we go. That's Mayo Clinic suggesting that Candida does not also exist. If we go to Candida and fake illness. It's all out there, people. You can go find this information. Um, you know, there's just people wanting to sell something, and there's also alternative doctors creating all these issues for money. There's absolutely no science behind the claim that 90% of the population have a problem with candida, candida causes cancer, or candida is a fungal infection. I'll say that again. Or that is actually a fungal infection. Of course, fake illnesses require fake treatments, and that's what generally happens. There, is, The concept is speculative and absolutely unproven. So it's not real, guys. Candida overgrowth, and uh, you just need to be careful about the people out there. And we've got another one, the candida overgrowth, problem too much yeast, no total, too little science. So here we go. The idea, that's, the idea that goes something like this, fungi, which includes yeast, such as candida, are a small but important part of our gastro tract. But they also overgrow. When they do, they can break down the wall of the intestine, penetrate the bloodstream, releasing toxic byproducts, blah, blah, blah. And that, you know, doctors are wanting to diagnose you with candida so that they can diagnose you and, and prescribe you something. 
and uh, you know they they blame Candida for everything, which is just ridiculous. Um, and you know you're gonna pay a lot of money for some kind of treatment that they're gonna sell you. Um, so again, Candida overgrowth does not exist, and uh, you know it's there's no science behind it. Um, these strong claims aren't black, backed by strong science or much logic for that matter, but that <laughs> they are attractive to people who are suffering from a real confusing medical issue who are desperate for hope and answers. So don't believe this stuff, guys. It's just unfortunate that there's people out there saying all these things. So the last one, here we go. We all have candida and it is absolutely okay. One of the more common online health fictions I encounter is that of the myth mythical condition called candida overgrowth. So it's just about doing your own research, guys. And, um, you know, it's out there. It's all documented that there's no reason why candida overgrowth should exist. It's, I mean, that's what our video was about. So, you know, I hope you guys uh, understand this and... Um, yeah, um, wish you all the best anyway, uh, if you guys are healing out there, and um, yeah, we'll see you in the next video. Alright guys, well thanks so much for watching, if you found this very useful, give it a good thumbs up, okay, and we're just trying to share with you our experience and the science out, out there. Yeah, what does the science say? Might be a new series coming up. That's right. So stay tuned for more videos like this, and we do have some coming up as well. So mm. if take you have, care. If you have any questions, comment section is there. Please ask questions in the comment section below. Uh, if you have any video ideas that you want us to do, I know this one's been asked about a lot. So I uh, hope you enjoyed it, and uh, take care. We'll see you in the next one. And remember, stay high, high carb, carb healthy. healthy.